Hey, what's up guys, it's the lead Don, and today I will be showing you my config file for Modern for 3. The program we will be using is called Modern for 3 Configuration Utility. Link will be in the description. Now, this isn't the latest version. I looked for the latest version, but sadly the creator is no longer supporting it. But it still partially works. So without any further ado, let's get started. The first thing you want to do is download the program. When it's done, just simply extract it and launch the program. We're going to go ahead and do that right now. Say yes to user account control. The next step is to load your config file. So just head over to the advanced tab, hit edit, and search for your Modern for 3 game folder. For me, it's in my documents, my games, Call of Duty Modern for 3, players 2, and click on the config underscore mp. The program should restart with your config file loaded. Alright, now we can start in our configuration file. On the edit ping bar, the number of ping bars does not work, so don't bother with that. And the ping interval, I would make it, recommend you leave that as default. The two bars, where you can switch colors, the two bars in the beginning will merge colors, so don't expect them to be actually red and orange. The only one that will be pretty accurate is the last final bar. And also, the if you click the background, you can change the background of the of the color. Now it's gray so it's basically transparent but if you select, select it to be black it will be black. After you've done that all you gotta do is click save and it will successfully save. Now full screen I have my game running on full screen because I wanted to utilize my entire GPU. I don't want it to run it in window mode because that's basically telling me that hey I want to multitask and it won't get the full benefit of the GPU. Uh, read only if you enter a modified uh, server, which in some servers it makes your gun black so you can get better FPS. And I don't really like servers doing that, so if you select it to read only, servers won't be able to uh, change your config file. Disable in-game music basically disables the menu music and also removes ambient noise, so you can hear footsteps a whole lot better, which is nice. Allow download. It's the opposite of read only. You're basically allowing the server to change your config file. So if you want the server to change your config file, which I doubt, then you can go ahead and check that. Alright, the graphics tab. This is where all the magic is about to go down. Uh, this allows you to turn off uh, some stuff that you really don't need and might give you a FPS gain if you're running on a brick computer. If you have a decent computer you will not see any FPS gain that much. But yeah, let's get started with my settings. Blood. This is pretty straightforward. If you have it checked, you'll see blood when your teammates get shot. I don't really want to see that. And so I'll just uncheck it. Uh bullet shells when you shoot your gun you'll see the actual bullet shells come out. If you want some FPS gain, I mean you can have that on. Or if you think it gets in the way, you can turn it off. I'm going to leave it on. The sun, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. If there's a map that has sun, it will remove it. I'm going to take that off. If there's a map that has water, it will remove it. I'm going to uncheck that. Depth of field, you can simply do this in the main menu in the settings of the game. Or you can do it here, and that's why we're doing it. Duh. So I'm going to uncheck that because I like to use... Uh, Fences, peak areas, and sometimes it blurs that peak area that I want. It doesn't blur the sides, and it's very annoying. Ragdoll effect is basically the effect when you die. So let's say you're watching your teammate and he gets shotgun. It's most likely that his body will fly back, and that's the ragdoll effect. So I'm a, I don't want to really see that. So I'm gonna just uncheck it. Dynamic environment. Uh, let's say you throw a grenade on top of a roof and there's tires. When it explodes, the tires will bounce off. And there's actually a map that has that. I'm using that as an example. Um, and another example would be in Dome. There's some boxes. If you shoot it, they move. If you turn dynamic environment off, they will not move. So I really do not want to see that. Although it sh I really should have it on because it helps out. The flash grenade icon is only for the flash. And it's basically like the Semtex icon and the grenade icon. When a grenade's near you, it shows a little icon. 
but I recommend you leave this off because it's pretty useless. I mean, once a flash grenade hits you in the face, I mean, it's pointless and it's so fast that it's, I mean, it's not worth having on or off. I don't even know why the option is there, but yeah. The HUD is basically your ammo and all that. But it doesn't really work for techno gods for some reason. Um, and also I don't see why you want to turn off your HUD. I mean, unless you're trying to make montage videos. But like I said, it doesn't work entirely. It actually leaves the radar on and it's, it's ugly. Uh, heat distortion, if you get close to a blown up car, you see like heat waves. That's pretty much heat distortion. I want to turn that off. Uh, crosser, I don't see why you want to turn off your crosser. It's very useful. Soft, soft and smoke. It's, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. It softens the smoke. And it also affects you in performance, so I'm going to turn that off. Shadows, I'm going to turn it off. Matter of fact, I turn shadows off for every game. Specular map is what causes the uh, gold camel to shine. So, if you want the actual gold gold camel, then leave that on. But if you want to have that solid brown ugly color when you have gold on, then turn it off. Bullet impacts, I recommend you have this on. Very useful if you're playing competitive or whatever. The glow effect, um, it's pretty straightforward. It's a glow effect when the sun hits your uh, gun. Um, I'm going to turn this off because I made some custom camo for the ACR and it's very ugly when the glow effect hits it. Uh, vertical V-Sync uh, caps your FPS to your monitor hertz or your the hertz of your monitor, my bad. For example, my monitor is 60 hertz so if I turn V-Sync on, it will cap it at 60 FPS. Uh, I don't recommend you have this checked because it also causes input lag which is a no-no for FPS games. Uh, jump hint, I mean, it has pictures, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you want to leave that on, unless you're doing the montage once again, then you might want to turn those off. Lagometer, snapshot, and viewer position do not work anymore. If I'm correct, Infinity Ward removed the code of those three options from the game, and they do not work. Chat lines, uh, it's up to you, personal preference. I'm going to change it to 6 because a lot of Spanish players like to spam chat, and if I have it at 8, it's going to block a lot of view on my screen. Uh, max number of lights, that's pretty straightforward. I leave it on 4, you could set it to 0 for some FPS improvements if you're running on a brick computer, like I said. Size of the UAV, I don't recommend you change because the little scanning radar does not change with the actual UAV size, so it looks retarded, and uh, that's just my opinion. But if you want to go change it, go ahead, but I recommend you leave it at default, 100. Glass gravity, basically when you break the glass, it goes down. So it also has a description, if you put it at negative 800, the glass will go up when you break it. I don't see why you want your glass to go up, unless if you're... You want to make a movie called All Glass Goes to Heaven. <laughs> uh, chat duration is basically how long the chat lasts. So if I call you a scrub on the server, it will last for 12 seconds. So you're a scrub for 12 seconds. <laughs> Max ragdoll characters is basically only if you have ragdoll effect enabled. And what this does is it renders out a lot of the rent. It has to do with uh, the bodies that is rendered on the map. So let's say you kill the whole team in one area. They're capping A. I don't see why the a lot of people. I don't see why the whole team will gather up on the A domination point. And let's say you call in a predator missile and kill all of them. If you have this set to three, you only see three bodies. If you have this set to sixteen, then you will see all bodies including some of your teammates. So set that to zero if you're gonna have ragdoll effect enabled. Or well, not don't set it to zero. I don't think it allows you to have it to set to zero. But set it to three, the lowest it will increase your FPS because it does rent it does use some type of rendering. Uh, if you're using a decent computer you will not see any type of FPS improvement. 
the size of U in the kill cam. This is basically the little U. I like to set this to 4 because it's a little bit too big in my opinion. And when I'm spectating, well, when I want to see if somebody's hacking and I don't want to spectate them, I want to see the exact U, the same size of my player model. See if he's wall hacking. If I can't base it off that kill cam, then I'll just spectate him. Texture quality, I recommend you set all this in the actual in game settings. As for, uh, what's this called? Anti sophic filtering. Uh, I have it at 16. The higher the number, the better the texture quality. Um, the max is 16, and I think it goes by 4s, so it's 4, 8, I don't think there's 12, I think it's just 4, 8, and 16, honestly. Uh, AA sampling is basically anti-aliasing, I recommend you have that off. Uh, refresh rate, that's just the refresh rate of my monitor, and resolution, I have it at 1920 by 1080. The controls tab is pretty self-explanatory. It just allows you to change your controls, your key bindings. But what I like is if you click on the mouse button, it gives you the option to change your sensitivity to an actual number. When you go into your settings and change your sensitivity, it just gives you a little bar. It doesn't give you any type of accurate number of what your sensitivity is. Also, you have the ability to turn off acceleration, so I have that at zero. Now, yaw and pitch keyboard yaw and keyboard pitch I have no clue what it does it does give you a description if you highlight over it but I, I I didn't get it I did some research and I still didn't get it with the descriptions that it gave me so I just leave that at default invert look I have that off free look I have that on smooth mouse I have that off and I don't recommend you use that because it causes input lag Everything is such a default except for my sensitivity. The edit config file tab is pretty self-explanatory. If you want to look for some other type of commands that you want to edit, then you can just search them up. For example, I'm using the sensitivity one. I'm going to type in sense, and there you go. Set up sensitivity. All you do is edit the value, uh, 0.4. I don't want to actually do that. So I'm going to just put it back to normal. And you just hit save config file, and it saves it. You can search for all types of commands in there if they're not in the other tabs and just edit them to what you want. Hit save and that's pretty much it. The advanced tab is pretty straightforward as well. You could save multiple config files for whatever reason you like. Maybe a competitive config file where everything is on low and another one for uh, movies. So you could record your montages. File locations, I explained that earlier in the video. On the right we have restore defaults and you don't really have to restore your entire config file. It allows you to restore your common settings or just your graphics or just your controls or you can restore all configuration files or you can restore everything if you really messed up or you just want to do that for some reason. But anyways that's pretty much the end of the video for the modern for conversion utility tool. Um, if you like the video and you like my configuration settings, go ahead and give that video a like. If you did not like this video for some reason, then just go give it a dislike. If you would like to watch more content of mine, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for future videos. And I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye.